Today, we are going to begin our sewing project. Our goals for this project will be to learn how to thread a needle, tie a knot, sew stitches to create a shape, and to use the burlap fabric. Let's get started on our first basic steps. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how to thread our needle. Look at the guide that I have above and follow along. I have a string, you can choose any color you want. I have a piece of an index card that I've folded up. I make sure that it's just tall enough to fit through the eye of my needle. And I have a plastic sewing needle. Step one, we're gonna be placing our string into our paper threader. Sometimes I refer to this as a hot dog bun because of the way that it closes. Notice that I have an end popping out one side and end popping out the other. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to guide my string back so that I don't have any extra sticking out. You can look closely and see that there's no fuzzies from my string sticking out. And, oops, sorry, it's working with the camera. And it's all pinched inside. I'm ready for step two, which is squeeze and push your threader into the eye of the needle. The eye of the needle is the hole. So I'm gonna take my threader, which is holding my string still, and push it through the eye of my needle. This other hand is going to get the threader and pull. Notice how this left hand is now holding the needle. They just swap places and I pull it through. Once I've pulled my string through, I can let the threader come off gently. I'm gonna try that one more time. Again, we are going to place our string in our threader, just like a hot dog in a hot dog bun. I'm going to squeeze Gently pull until there's none of that end popping out. It's hiding inside of that threader, that hot dog bun threader, and place it through. I'm still squeezing so that the string does not disconnect, and I pull it through. Once it's through, I let go of the threader, and now I have a short side about the size of my finger and a long side. This is how we thread our needle. Let's go ahead and practice that step. Okay, now that we have our needle threaded, we're gonna move over to the next step, which is tying a knot on the end. I have my needle on the top of my thread, or at the top end, I call it, because it has the short string and the long string. I'm gonna leave my needle way over there. I don't need it right now because I'm actually gonna be working at the opposite end, the bottom. Today, step one is to Cross your end over and make a loop on top. Let me adjust my zoom to make sure that I am in the camera. So make sure you really see this. Here we go. So we're gonna, sometimes I make a letter U to begin with, and then I'm gonna cross my string over to make that loop. Step two. We're gonna loop our end, the end of our string, through our hole two times. I do this by lifting it up, taking the end and poking it through the hole. I'm gonna come around a second time and poke it through the hole again. I can see that now I have two twists going around my loop. I'll show you that again. I'm gonna get real close. I cross it over, and then I'm going to make the loop, have the end go through the loop one time. Here it is. I'm gonna push it back and push it through again. That end is a little bit shorter now because 
it's gone through. And I have my twisty ties, or the twisties that go around that loop now. Step three, we are going to pull and slide the end to end to make the knot tighten. If I were to tighten right now, this knot would probably end up in the middle of my string. But instead, I'm going to hold the end of my string and push down with my fingers. By doing that, the knot tightens at the end instead of in the middle. All right, let's try that one more time. We're going to make a U crossover, and then we're going to take that end, push it back and through, back and through the hole, and then again, push it back and through the hole. It's where we have a total of two times that that has been pushed back and gone through the hole. And now we're going to get the end, push down with our fingers. My knots actually stacked on top of each other. That's totally fine. I encourage my students to repeat this step as much as they want, to practice knots, even have a string that's only for knots. And then when they're ready to sew, they'll have that step mastered. Okay, our needle is threaded, our knot is tied. We're ready to start our final project for sewing. The first thing to do is to pick your shape. I have different shape cutouts that I'll trace onto your burlap fabric, and I need you to pick one. So look here to decide on a shape that you would like to stitch around. Today, I chose the apple. The next thing you're going to get to choose is your color. These are the colors I have available today. It might be different when you join me or in your classroom, and that's okay. Today, I'm going to choose my dark green. While you wait on me to come around to trace your shape with my black Sharpie or gold Sharpie, I want you to take that string that you are knotting and threading, and I want you to work on making a straight line. I want you to think about how you are going to make a straight line with stitching all the way up or all the way to the side. The way I think about stitching is this. When I drive down the road and I see the dashed lines on the road, I know that they are the same length and they are in a row and the space between them is equal. So not only are the actual lines equal in length, but the gaps between those lines are also equal. They're not going in a zigzag, they're not going curvy, some aren't short, some aren't long, they're all the same. That's what we're going to strive for with our first attempt at stitching today. It won't be perfect, and that's okay. Today, we are simply starting. Think about this. If you were stitching, and you did short stitches, long stitches, maybe some over here, maybe some here, some here. That would get pretty confusing, right? So instead, we want to have our straight lines just like the lines on the road. To do that, we're gonna make sure that we know where the back of our work is. I tell my kids with masking tape, the back has your name, and that's where your knot goes. If this is my knot, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to start it from the bottom. I also like to think about my knot just like the anchor of a boat. The anchor of a boat does not go up in the sky. It goes under the water. We hardly ever see it. Same thing with our knots. By using my needle to come up from the bottom, I know when I pull through that my knot will stop right there. That knot is what is keeping my string from falling out. Now that that knot is there, I don't need to pull terribly hard, but it's there to keep my string in place. Because I've come up, that tells me I need to go back 
down. I'm not going to go down diagonally across or sideways. I'm going to try to go in front. Now I'm going to zoom in because I want to teach you about this fabric. One of the reasons I really like using this fabric for my students is because this fabric is a grid and part of it is see-through. You can even see my fingers through some of this or even my needle. You can see my blue needle floating around. But this type of fabric, burlap, is a grid. So I can think about how I can trace my needle up a, a line, straight line, and then poke through. I'm gonna bring my needle through, and I'm gonna pull until the gap in my string, this big loop extra, is not looped and extra. It's gently laying on top. Okay. I do the same thing on the back. I look. That looks to be about in line. Okay, I'll pull it through. Check the back to see if there's any extra. Oh, there was. There's some extra there. So that means I want to make sure that I pull until that extra is not there. Otherwise, that's string wasted that you could have been sewing with. Okay. This stitch looks like it's about the width of my thumb. So I'm gonna eyeball it. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'm gonna think about how big those stitches are. I'm gonna go through, pull until there's not any more extra. There are some artists who appreciate having some support and having a great guideline. If that's you, something I do is I take my permanent marker and I draw guidelines. To use guidelines, I would use my needle from the bottom, and I'm gonna come up and poke exactly where that line begins. Here we go. Now I'm on that line, and I'm gonna poke my needle down where that guideline ends. This helps me know that I'm traveling on that line. I'll do this again. I love this burlap because I can see straight through it. And I'll finish up this line. Boys and girls, remember, as I'm coming around to trace the shapes you've chosen, I want you to practice this line. When you have finished this line, you're gonna turn it over. And you're gonna use your knot skills. You're gonna make a loop. You're gonna twist that end through one, push it back, go through another time, that's two times. And then you are gonna pull the knot down towards your work. This gives you a knot so that it doesn't come out. All right, I'll be around to trace the stencil while you're working on your beautiful first straight line. All right, so as far as tracing stencils goes, I have found it this year beneficial to trace it for my students just to set them up for success. I have a black marker for light colors, gold metallic for darker colors just to help contrast. I hold my stencil in place. I've just cut these out with my um, die cutter at the school. I chose some shapes that would be popular, but also um, had a balanced amount of sides and edges, but not too challenging for beginner sewers. And I hold it and I've cut this out of cardstock to make a really good stencil and then I just trace. It doesn't have to be super dark, but just enough to see. Okay, now that I have my stencil traced, I'm gonna tie my, I'm gonna thread my needle, which we have practiced this. The poster will be up on the board. Thread that needle, tie a knot. We have a short end up here, and I have my knot down here. Again, make a letter U, pass it over, push that end one time through, two times through, 
slide it down to the bottom. You can see my knot kind of blends in, but it's right there. And knots go at the back, just like anchors go at the bottom of the ocean. I'm going to start here on my guideline, and I'm going to think about how my stitches. I think I want to do smaller stitches for this one, but I'm going to start looking at how I can get my stitches a similar distance apart. So not only are they the same size of stitch, but also they have the same distance apart. For me, I don't want to have too much distance apart because I like having my shape clearly defined. So I'm looking at my embroidery, and in my burlap I'm thinking I don't want more than two little squares. There's one, there's two, I'm going to have no more than two as a gap. Maybe for you that's different, but that's something I like to think about. The more spaces between your stitches, the harder it might be to see that beautiful shape you're working on and that you chose because you like it. I hope you enjoy this project. I've talked to my students about how stitching is not only something to learn about a textile art form, but it's also very soothing. A lot of my students who um, get into stitching, they tell me, Mrs. Jerk, this is very relaxing. And it is, because once you learn the steps of how to thread and tie and knot and stitch, then part of your brain kind of gets to turn off. You already know those steps, so you don't have to think as hard, and you just get the pleasure of repeating a simple step and accomplishing your work and relaxing your body. I'm gonna keep going around. When I get all the way around, I'm gonna be tying my knot off. So I'm even gonna switch a color so that I can get my apple leaves and my stem the colors that I want. Hey artist, so if you're ever needing to change colors, what you do on the back, wherever you want to stop the first color, you tie a knot. Always tie the knot before you trim your string. And then wherever you wish for your new color to start, you just have your knot, you have your needle threaded, and you get stitching. Today, I'm using my brown color to do my stem. And then I'm gonna use some green, some brighter green, to do my leaf. I've talked to my students about how the colors they choose against the color of burlap they've chosen should be colors that can stand out. They're working really hard on their beautiful image, so they definitely want to make sure that others can celebrate and see their work with them with colors that have contrast. Contrast means that they cause each other to appear quite different or brighter. I'm choosing to come down this way with my stem. There's an apple stem. I'm going to tie my knot. It's okay that I had a lot of leftover. I've made my loops. And now I'm going to slide that down to where I have a knot that is close to my fabric. And I'll finish up with my green. All right, artists, so I have run into an issue that a lot of my artists do, and I want to talk about why it happens and how to fix it. So, when my artists make a stitch, they discover that, oh my goodness, all of a sudden they have two strings. They can't get their needle off, it's stuck, and they don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Your string, you're only using one, has a short end and a long end. Sometimes I refer to these ends as tails, sometimes I choose the word end. I use them the same way. This wiggler right here is the actual end, what should have been the short end of your string. This is why when you're threading, I always remind you, have a short end that's the length of your finger and no longer because it is very unlikely that this short end will get tangled up in your work because it is so short. You might be worried, oh, 
this is gonna come off my needle. While you're sewing, your fingers can actually sew and hold your string at the same time. By holding your string and your needle at the back, your fingers are squeezing and clamping down on that thread so it can't come out while also being able to guide your needle and drive the needle in the direction you need it to go. So if you find that your work is stuck and it looks like this, lay your needle down and gently start to pull on one. If that one doesn't give, then pull on the other. It's because that's the loose tail, the end that should have been shorter. Make it short and then keep on going. All right, there you have it. I have my long line that I've practiced. I have my shape that I have outlined with stitches that are similar in size and distance apart. And they are stitches that do show the shape of my work because they're close together. I've changed colors to create different parts of my work. And going forward, this project can be elevated. Maybe you choose to do a sailboat and in the background you want to make ocean waves of different blues. Maybe you do a flower and you decide you want to draw in and stitch a leaf or add buttons and a hanger. These are all ways that we can elevate and kind of bump our project up to the next level. With this single stitch, you could even choose to continue it around to be like a picture frame. Or if you don't like it and you have other ideas, after you've shown me that you've practiced it, you can always cut it out. Artist, I am so excited to have you make these beautiful stitches with practicing embroidery on burlap fabric. Happy making. Thank you.